Hi there, I'm Kylie Mowbray-Allen from Hello Media. And I'm Jenny Walk from Elephant in the Room Consulting, and you're tuning into Bite Size Business Life Podcast, the show that helps business owners get clarity and insight to grow their dream business. Whether you're launching, ready to scale, or figuring out what's next, we discuss the nitty gritty, the hard bits, the opportunities, and the behind the scenes, and share how we've grown our own companies and helped others do the same. We're glad you're here. Hi there, everyone. This is Jenny Walk from Ellen from the Room Consulting, and I have my amazing digital BFF, Kylie Mobra Ellen from Hello Media, and you're tuning into Bite Size Business Live Podcast, the show that helps small businesses owners, sorry, get clarity and insight to grow their business dream. How are you this morning, Kylie? Good, Jenny. So great to see you. Tell us where you are today. Today I'm in Mara, which is about 90 minutes, two hours inland from Rockhampton. I'm here with a client. We're doing some uh, big, big roadshow this week. We're going to be in Mara, then Middlemount, then Moorumbah, and then we finish off in Mackay. So it's a an M week this week. <laughs> big, big week. Another one. Is it cold or hot? Um, it's actually been drizzly. We were in Rockhampton yesterday. It was perfect, beautiful blue skies, probably 18 degrees. And today it's about 18 degrees, but it's got a bit of overcast and drizzle, So, um, which is much needed in this region. They need the rain. So it's um, it's great that it's raining, just not great for our, for our road trip. Yeah, <laughs> crikey. But at least you've got a buddy on your adventures. That's good. Yes. Yeah, we've got a couple of people who are driving. We've got some some colleagues from overseas who've joined us and, and we're doing some cultural awareness training. We're doing some meetings with traditional learning groups. We're doing some meetings with them with one of my clients and their uh, leadership team. So it'll be a really fun trip. Sounds amazing. And what was the event that you were at on uh, Saturday night? Something to do with NIDOC. Day. Yeah, so it's, it's a, so this week is NADOC week. Happy NADOC week, everybody! Um, third to the seventh of July, um, and it, so we had the national NADOC ball on Saturday night. Uh, so just opportunity where they celebrate all the NADOC award winners for the year for the, at the national level. So that includes like the elder male and female elder of the year, um, cultural advocate of the year, youth youth representative. So really fun evening. Um, great to connect with lots of other clients and friends and colleagues, um, and just have a bit of fun. Brilliant. It looked, oh, the photos were wonderful. <laughs> it looked really I've still got the curls from, from Saturday night in my hair. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. Happy NADOC week to everybody. Um, tell us a little bit, Jenny, before we get stuck into our topic, what NADOC means for those that are listening that have never heard of it. Maybe they're outside of Australia, for example. So NADOC week runs, sorry, the 2nd to the 9th of July. It's a whole week. We say 3rd to the 7th, but that's because that, that's, that's the actual Monday to Friday. Um, but National NADOC, the NADOC week is an observance that lasts um, for the same same week every year, so same dates. And it's really just around um, a, a opportunity to recognise and celebrate um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across Australia. Um, they have a theme every year this year it's for our elders um, and so we basically celebrate and, and pay respect to um, our elders and want to um, showcase the amazing work our elders have done to maintain our stories keep us um, connected to our culture but also share their knowledge um, with uh, other other uh, people around Australia in terms of our culture and heritage so that we can maintain our connection so they run events all across the all, all across Australia um, it's the, the the title for NADOC is a bit old actually it's the um, National Aborigines and Islanders Day Observance Committee is what NADOC stands for. So the NADOC in itself is kind of just now the acronym that's used. But really, it's um, uh, it's really designed as an opportunity to uh, uh, invite people to lean into First Nations culture um, and and ask questions and connect and, and really just start to showcase the incredible kind of history and the rich histories of all the different cultures across Australia. So a great thing to be to put out for everybody listening would be what country are you on? So go and have a little look. If you're not sure, if it's not something that's talked about in your world, then go and check it out and find out a little bit about the history of your area. And what I can do and what we will do is we will add in um, into the Facebook group. Um, we can actually have, add into the, what they call the AXIS map, which is the map of Australia, of Indigenous Australia. It's a language map that was done many, many years ago. Um, and it allows you to see uh, what country and what Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander country that you're on. So we'll add that into the Facebook group and, and add comments so that people can, can go in and have a look what country they're on. Wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you. 
Um, so today we're talking about um, Facebook and particularly five optimization tips for your Facebook business page. And I just wanted to say that last week I took a uh, taught a one day Facebook masterclass and I had to completely rewrite it from the last masterclass because everything has changed. So now we're all on the new pages experience. It's so weird. So, for example, I was on the new pages experience a year ago, but this new one and, you know, they rolled it out really slowly. But this new one that came out last week is completely different all, all over again. The it's confusing finding, me so much. It's so confusing, but what's I'm finding so bizarre and just looking at how Facebook is evolving is that when you look at what's happening on our personal accounts, right? How we can now become a professional account. We can now, they're encouraging us to talk about our business, promote our business on our personal account. We can even run ads from our personal professional account. Now on our business account, they're encouraging us to put our hobbies up, our favorite movies, books we've read, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, who, who, who we're in a relationship with. It's like, what on earth is going on? Why are they wanting them to merge so much? Where on business, you talk so much about personal and personal so much about business. It is extremely confusing and bizarre as far as I'm concerned. I was going to ask you that question, but I, my theory about it is, is that they're recognizing that the shift and particularly the, the current generation, future generations, then their businesses and their world, uh, their personal world and their business world are really the same these days. And so people want to show up and be their whole self. So the crazy person on Saturday night, they want their clients to know who that is or their weird hobbies. They want to be able to talk to that with their clients. Or I guess for me, I wear Jordans and we have new pairs of Jordans. So, you know, that's that kind of blend between personal and business and I think there, there's this kind of understanding or belief that we want to be you know combine the two in personal and business together and I kind of really struggle with that a little bit to be honest because I think um, when we spend so much time in business having a slight separation or having a separation between what you do in your personal life and with your family and your hobbies that you do then is the way that you actually allow yourself to recharge and if you're sharing with the sharing with that 100 percent of the time it's really difficult to recharge and to reconnect with your own self because you're always in this kind of business mode so i'm still kind of on the fence about you know how that's going to work because i certainly am probably not going to put my hobbies up on my business page i'm probably not going to put that i'm in a relationship with my fiance on my business page because to me that's not relevant to the work that i do i'm 100 percent with you i just think ignore all that kind of part of it it just seems <laughs> Odd to me, unless you're a singer and therefore you might want to put up about your hobbies of singing or whatever. But yeah, yeah I really, I think that it's just too much. I and I do agree. like that in our personal one, we can talk about our business because I think that that's a, you know, a nice flow on, but I definitely don't think on our business page. And, you know, now reach is down to approximately 1% organically. So actually, why are they trying to get us to do more on our on our business pages when they're actually not at all trying to help us get any better reach from it? No. So it's I'm 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 putting it out there as a watch the space and see how all that's evolving. I'm wondering whether or not there won't be there won't be a separation between personal and business pages in the future, and there'll just be a page and they'll you, it combines all of them together. That's kind of how my brain feels like it's going, which would be terrifying for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But that's, that's a much. tricky one, though, because yeah. of the fact that you think of a company like, let's just use Coca-Cola, for example, who would be that page? Yeah. And then that staff member leaves. So it's kind of like Instagram in a way that anyone can log in or log out and off you go and run it. But it's not then, you know, involved. You don't need a personal page to run Instagram. No, Whereas no, I Facebook totally get that. You yeah. must have your personal to run it. So, and I, I've already got clients that feel awkward and uncomfortable around what they say and what they operate, you know, on their business page. So it's a very, it's a very interesting tech. So it was fascinating rewriting this whole masterclass and um, just getting really stuck into how you can optimize it, how you can improve it, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought great thing that we could share a few tips and these tips are across the board, no matter if Facebook changes again in six months or six weeks or whatever, these have been standard for years yeah so what is your first tip on how to optimize your business page on facebook 
Well, you've absolutely got to nail your profile picture and your cover image. So firstly, your profile picture, a lot of people think because it's a business page that it should be their logo, but that's not strictly true. It's what's right for you and your business. So on Facebook, my business page is a logo. My, my profile picture is a logo, but on Instagram, my business page is my photo with my logo. So I think it's up to you completely what you do. If you are your business, then definitely put your photo in there. But on the other hand, if you sold your business tomorrow and it could keep running, is it relevant that it would have your photo? I'm not yeah. sure. So that's how I kind of look at it. But your cover image, that's your biggest opportunity of all to really, when someone goes to your page to see who you are, what you do and how you help people. So for example, I like to have on there one of my lead magnets on my cover and then it's got a call to action on it. it says click here. And when they click on that cover image up in the caption, there is a link there to sign up to whatever it is that I'm offering. So you can change your cover image regularly and put up your, um, you know, next event, your next workshop, maybe a discovery chat with you, whatever you want it to be. But a lead magnet's a great one to have as that cover. And I know you've talked about that before, but I really love that idea because it's otherwise it's really wasted space, isn't it? If you oh, can actually totally. put something in there that people can interact and connect with, it's really going to add value to your business page, but also it's going to help bring people into the page and have that conversion, which is really what you want the page to do. Totally. So think of it as the best billboard opportunity you've possibly got. And if people come to your page and all they see is your business name or your tagline or your slogan, you're really missing out on some on some yeah, opportunities. Such a great tip. And that links into your second tip, isn't it? Because it's around having those links to everywhere. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we've got to really be focused on not putting in links in any of our posts. You don't want to link in your caption. Obviously, you want to tag a page or something, but you don't want to say, click here to register for my Zoom or click here to buy this product. So the easiest way to do that is to have a very, very optimized bio and be talking about in your about section. So have the links to all your other socials, have the link to your website there, or maybe instead of your website, you want it going to your feed link or your link pop or whatever, so that you've got all the different things there. But basically you want to be making sure that when someone looks at about, it is so beautifully optimized, we can tell exactly in a flash exactly what you're about. And I think the buyer is always that thing I oh, will do later, isn't it? It's like, oh, don't worry about that. But it's so important because if you, if there's one section that they're going to, they don't get time to scroll through your images or your captions, that does capture their attention. It can have everything that you need in that one spot and a really great way, particularly if you've got that that, that profile picture and the cover photo or image optimised and that's going to be the next place they're going to go. They're going to go, oh, what's this? Tell me about this. How do I do that? So Absolutely. then what's the third tip you have around Facebook oh, optimization for your business page. Before I go for the third, I'm just going to give you a little um, challenge on the second, and that is to go and look at your bio right now. You're about on Facebook and just check it because we've been reduced now to just a number of characters. So no longer is it a paragraph. So I'm pretty sure everyone will find that they've been chopped off so that their sentence no longer makes sense. So go in there, check it out and go, okay, if I'm going to do one thing today, so I'm going to fix up my about one sentence. But a third tip is your vanity URL. Now, most people won't have even heard of what a vanity URL is, but it's super simple. It's mm -hmm. basically what your business page is, but in the www.facebook.com forward slash, et cetera, et cetera. So what you may not know is that you just get a whole lot of gobbledygook when you set up a Facebook page, but you can actually then go and claim what you want it to say. So for you, Jenny, what's your vanity URL? Mine is Elvin the Room AU. Perfect. There you go. Mine is actually, it's a long one, hellomedia.dream.team because I couldn't have either just Hello Media or hellomedia.team. So we just added in dream. Why not? It's one of our taglines. So, but it's really important that you go and check that one out. So number four, and this one blows my mind how few people aren't using this incredible opportunity, but that is featured posts. So if you haven't heard of featured posts, it is when you've got a post that really talks about who you are, what you do, and how you help people, pin it to the top of your page. And you can pin a number of posts up there, but also pin your lead magnet post too. Make sure that they're not, you know, five years old, the posts that are pinned up there. For example, it happens to me regularly that I go, oh, I forgot to unpin that webinar that we did a week ago. So make sure you add it to your to-do list. At the end of the webinar, boom, just jump on over and unpin that post. 
Um, and really the the well, best um, idea around it is to, for things to always be current. However, I have a one up that's up there that's a lead magnet pinned for probably about 18 months now, and it's still performing well. So I'm leaving it there. But really, you should be making them current and updating them regularly. I think that's a really important tip, though, because I've seen that so many times when I've gone to business pages. And pre- recently, I've been doing some deep dive, looking to work with partners across New South Wales on a project I've been running. And I go to their page and I look at the pin. The pin posts are from nineteen or two thousand and nineteen, and I'm like, and half of me doesn't want to scroll beyond that because I think they haven't been playing on this page. Yeah. But if I do scroll down, I see that there has been a 2023 post, but that really does turn me off. It makes me think that they're not paying attention to their business post or their clients or anything, if that's the case. So I think that's such an important piece to make sure that that pinned post is not only reviewed regularly or have something that's evergreen, that's fine, but make sure that if you are using something that is about an event or or a particular activity that you do take it down when it's finished. Absolutely. (laughs) And then my final tip is about video content. And I I know we do talk about this a lot, but due to the fact that we're now down to the 1% engagement that Facebook is, is allowing us to have for our, our organic posts, which is, let's face it, absolutely <laughs> dreadful, dreadful. So we more than ever need to be thinking about a very, very good organic strategy and a very good ad strategy also. Because, you know, at the end of the day, Facebook's free, isn't it? It's yeah. never going to be free forever. I mean, that's not true. Hopefully it will always be remain free. But in terms of for your business to get reach, perhaps you need to start thinking about an ad strategy. But um, if you're doing video content, you're going to get much higher reach than if you were doing static ads or, um, sorry, not ads, static graphics, for example. Yep. Definitely. So and what can you do for video? Is the so question. videos are also one of those things that um, I know my team talk to me a lot about video content because I, other than doing these post, these podcasts with you every week, I hate doing videos on Facebook. I hate doing videos full stop, <laughs> but we do know that we need to do it. And so uh, my team are constantly trying to get me to do that. And we're, I've committed to doing it for the next six months for us to actually start putting some more videos because also there's things that we want to say, you know, things that we do that do come across better in video format than they do in the written word, particularly if you've got, you know, you're a thought leader in a particular area or there's a, there's a point of difference that you want to share doing that as a video content has so much greater impact than if you just try and write that as a post. Absolutely. You think about what you just shared with us about NADOC week. And then, you know, that's literally just jump onto your phone for 20 seconds, talk about NADOC week and what it means and what you're going to be doing for it. And then that's it. And also, you know, I, I don't like doing lives either, except when I'm doing a Zoom live. But I don't do lives. I just use that fabulous teleprompter app. I've already created what it is that I want to say in my 20-minute spiel or whatever. I put my notes up and off I go. And then what I love about it is that then that is captioned for when I post it. So that is great because it's so important we remember about captions with our videos. A hundred percent. Definitely. I think that's so, so important. And so the, those tips really all link in together, don't they? And you, you kind of look at it as a hierarchy. It's almost how you look at your business page or any of your Facebook pages. It's that first page. What is your image and your caption or your cover page look like? What are the links that you're connecting with and your bio and how do you make sure you optimize that bio? The vanity URL is one of the things that I have a massive bugbear about though, Kylie, because so many businesses still have this profile number and I'm like, what are you doing? I can't yeah. find you. Um, featured posts so important and that video content. So do you have any other final tips for us? Uh, I think it's always good to talk about the algorithm because um, I've said it twice already. I'll say it again. Reach is down to 1% organically. So we've got to think about How can we change the algorithm? Now, one thing that I regularly chat about, this is on my own personal Facebook because this is a big issue for me. In fact, even this morning, an old client of mine posted this on her personal Facebook and I just face palm slapped, just went, are you kidding me? She literally said, if you copy and paste this onto your own, it will change the algorithm. So from now on, you'll be able to see posts from your friends and families and you won't see any more ads. And I'm like, what is the point of that? It's ridiculous. You are in charge of your algorithm and you will always be shown ads, whether you post and copy it or not, because 
it's a free platform and they've got to make money somehow. So the best top tip I can suggest really around and, that. And we want, to, we want them to do ads because if you are doing ads, you want people to see your ads. So saying you'll never exactly. see ads is actually ridiculous. Sorry. It's just like. Exactly. That. Yeah, exactly. So what we can do is when we see an ad, we can click on the three dots in the top right and we can say, don't see any more of this ad or don't want to see more ads like this, et cetera, et cetera, or see more ads like this. So you are creating the, 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 the feed that you want to be seen. So in terms of your, the Facebook algorithm, the, it's actually all ranked depending on how you are interacting with different businesses. So for example, if you interact with something because you're shocked by it, you can't stand it. It's appalling. Facebook doesn't know that. It just sees you sees you pausing. It sees you clicking. It sees you investigating. So like, great, I'll show more of that. <laughs> so definitely make sure if you don't like it, click those three dots and say, do not show me any more of this. So what, what the algorithm looks at or studies is who and what you regularly interact with. So if that's something like for me, my algorithm is all the what's it because of the fact that I'm constantly looking at clients' accounts. So it's showing me more and more um, things of my clients and my clients' competitors, which is great for me as a business owner. Not so great for me just if I'm wanting to do my own personal Facebook thing, but I can have another account if I want to. So that's really important is think about who and what you're interacting with. The next one is the type of media. So you will see more videos in your feed. You will see less posts that have links in them, for example. You'll see more carousels and you'll see some images, but the most of what you'll be seeing or shown is videos. So if you're not also posting videos, they're not being, you know, your stuff's not being shown to as many people either. And then the other one is, and this is probably the most important part, but it's the popularity of the post with that first little bit of when it was posted. So let's just say you have scheduled a post, <coughs> excuse me, for 6 a.m., but you haven't then got onto Facebook yourself and you haven't done any engaging or any looking at it or you haven't shared it into your stories or anything. Let's just say now it's 10 a.m. and you've still forgotten to go on. Then it's midday. Well, nothing's going to have happened to that post unless it was epic and other people saw it. But ideally, you need people on that post within minutes of you posting it. So if you haven't even looked at it and you haven't even been on engaging and no one else is looking at it, then it's just going to die. So it's just going to disappear. It's not going to appear in people's feeds. And that is hugely problematic. So and that's make, such a big tip. And that's such an important oh, tip that if you're scheduling, making sure you're looking at it, you're scrolling past it and you're getting people to engage with it. That's what you have a team for. That's what you're, you know, whether you're a small business, whether you have a large business, getting your team to go and have a look and comment or even just, you know, share it is so important to help boost that organic reach. And jump in, excuse me, jump into stories. Sh sorry, share it into stories and then do a little sticker saying new post. You know, like it's super, super easy as soon as you've put it out there. So it's a really quick, quick tip for you to follow. So wherever you've scheduled it for, just boom, up you go, share it into stories. Love that. Share it into your personal so, page. So if we want more of these amazing tips from you, how do people find you to get into those masterclasses that you talked about earlier and to get some of these amazing tips that we know are current and up to date? So you can either go to the website, hellomedia.team and look for the masterclasses or jump into our Facebook group, Hello Media, because I'm sharing a lot of new stuff in there. In fact, all weekend I was laid up because I've hurt my back. And so I was writing a bazillion posts all about new GA4 and all kinds of stuff. And in fact, I don't even think I posted one, but I was preparing them for weeks worth of new 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 um tips that you need to amazing your business that is awesome Jenny, how about how people can get in touch with you um elephant in the room au on facebook and insta is the best place to find us um and reach out there you've got our, you've got our links to our website and also um how to connect with us and book a book a discovery call so we can talk about your business talk about what you do um but yeah, yeah where we hang out on insta and facebook and Jenny, let me just point out that the fact that you were even able to say, find us on Facebook and Insta at Elephant in the Room AU. The reason is, is that's because you have your vanity URL set. Now, imagine if you didn't and you'd be saying, find us at, um, on Facebook, search for 279 star, blah, blah. <laughs> 
Um, my favorite one though is when we do it when I when I've seen people do that and um when when I audit when I get people to help build look with their website set up the business the first thing I do is go get your URL on Facebook and insert yes. important things to do when you start. Yes. But thank you so much for sharing such awesome awesome tips today. Um, thank you for everyone else to tuning in to listening to us on our bite size business life podcast. We're here next week. Be sure to subscribe and follow us so you do not miss our future episodes. And we're very very excited to share something fun and fancy with you next week awesome i look forward to it too jenny happy traveling this week i hope you have a fabulous time and happy nadoc week everyone happy nadoc thanks so much Kai. have an awesome all right thanks everyone Bye. bye